This is the sound of worlds beyond number. I've known, <laughs> um, I've known plenty of witches who uh, would not be so kind as you. You've known plenty of witches? The moon comes back into the sky, sailing, and it casts the light on one side of her face, and the shadow that it casts from the other side stretches endlessly into the night all the way to the shore. She says, Yeah, you seem like a small and sweet little witch. The captain opens her mouth and darkness slithers out. Time slows to a standstill. The rising and falling of the prow of the Rhone, making its way through choppy water near the shore, headed towards Port Talon. That crescent moon peaks underneath heavy cloud cover, coming sideways in between sky and sea to illuminate the now hollow expression of Captain Emless. Her mouth opens and pure shadow emerges. How it can communicate mass and form when it seems to absorb all light, you do not know, but you can see in the ripples of its lightning fast approach that indeed it is given substance here in space between you. The shadow moves and I will need everybody here to roll initiative. Oh, we're doing it! <laughs> Ursulon rolled a 14. See, we got a 12. Ame got a 15, and just in case you needed it, uh, the fox got a 1. Oh, buddy. Uh, very well. Um, okay. uh, very well. Uh, uh, Brent is contemplating asleep? how he's about to kill all of us. <laughs> Ame, thankfully, you beat the initiative, which means that you come out of the surprise condition. You, your turn. Ooh. So the so you you have dodged the worst case scenario of this thing being able to act twice on you. But we do move through everybody's initiative. You guys are still fighting on the back deck. We come to Emless's turn. Ame, you spend your turn in initiative, coming out of the surprised condition. As you do so, you realized with horror that something very terrible is happening and you are suddenly faced with the prospect of danger in your life post-grandmother Wren and now far away from hearth and home. I'm going to roll the first attack roll of the campaign. <laughs> Time is suddenly quick again and as the prow hits the ocean, and the spray comes up, you roll flatten as a lance of shadow scours the deck behind you and mist rises up from wood that you can see rots a little on contact with the thing emerging from Emlis's mouth. She steps back and crouches as well. Ami, you are first to act. Um, you are isolated in that little cute cubby area right near the prow of the ship with Emless blocking your exit towards the rest of the ship. Uh, she has struck at you or whatever she truly is has struck at you. You hear hissing in silence and feel cold, not, not the, the welcoming cold of the sea wind, but some deeper cold here. What do you do? Captain, what are you doing? You offered, you offered us your hospitality. What are you? Uh, you make that request and uh, see uh, uh, 
her pupils have expanded past the whites of her eyes and they are pure black. Um, there is nothing, there, there is no look of recognition or even of consciousness upon asking that question. Um, that's a free action to speak. Uh, you have your action, your movement, bonus action, whatever you would like to do in this moment. In shock, I scramble up to my feet and the handful of uh, uh, finely ground little red pepper that I had uh, been sorting into piles in my herbal kit, I uh, dash into her face, just in shock. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, and what ability is this that you are using? I, I well, I essentially, I have maced her. You blow uh, these uh, sort of <sighs> collection of spices and flower petals. Uh, they hit the dripping, almost undulating cascade of whether it be liquid smoke or fabric, this living shadow emerging from her mouth. Uh, as they hit it, uh, you expect them to fall away, pass through, and instead they are simply gone. Uh, I try to tumble past her, tucking and rolling, grabbing the fox as I go. I am going to need an athletics or acrobatics check uh, for you to push past. That's going to be an acrobatics check. 14. Oh, big willy. Uh, you are able to quickly push past uh, Captain Emless. Um, as you do so, uh, she is going to get an attack of opportunity on you as you leave the area of her threat to you. That's going to be a hit. Ame, as you rush past her, you've just come too close. She turns around and suddenly you experience the feeling of, you never knew that you could feel moonlight on your body, so it's just something you thought you could see. But when something is taken away from you that you've had your whole life, that's when you tend to appreciate it most. And as the shadow touches you, and it robs the light, not only from this moment, but from you yourself. You take 10 points what? of necrotic damage and lose four points of strength. Are you still up? No. Not only do you feel the light being robbed from you, as you take 10 points of necrotic damage and four points of strength damage, you feel life itself being taken from the parts of you that are touched by this magic. Your blood stops flowing in your body, your organs shrivel, your muscles contract and deteriorate. The process of entropy, pure and unmitigated by the presence of life itself, acts on your body in the fluid form of where the shadow touches you. This shadow, thankfully, Ame, does not touch your heart. It merely touches across your torso, your arms, midsection, across your upper shoulders. However, that is enough to badly injure you in that moment where those parts of you that need life are suddenly rendered deadly cold and still for you to drop, having lost much of your strength and much of the blood in your body as you drop out of the shadow to the deck, suddenly bursts in capillaries all throughout you. And to a viewer, they would immediately see, like dark roses, blooms of bruising all across your body where the shadow touched you. I collapse onto the deck with a cry. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm level one. What are you doing? Hey, Brennan, yeah. Can we check in? Can we sidebar yeah. real quick? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I just can't believe what you're doing. And my body is reacting to it. Um, you know, you, 
<laughs> you know I'm ahead eight hit points, right? We just want to check in. You had eight hit points? You don't sound surprised. Don't sound surprised. Uh-huh. I guess I'm surprised. You can count the hug. Well, I guess, you know, I guess this horrifying being didn't uh, check in with your character sheet before it decided to kill you. <laughs> well, hey, Brendan. <laughs> well, maybe. Whose job is that? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Uh, uh, not mine. Uh, they, they should have a little discussion <laughs> beforehand. Uh, I guess it's time about for About wanting arc. to live or die. Yeah, I feel like we should start any NPC we meet. Hi, my name's Ursaline. I'm a level one paladin, okay? <laughs> I just want to be clear. <laughs> Every NPC's oh. nose just starts bleeding. <laughs> Suvi, you immediately uh, clock. Uh, you hear that? What? No! Uh, and Ursulan, you see Suvi reacting in that moment. Okay. Uh, Ursulan, it is your turn. Oh, uh, uh, I will tend to on me. No. <laughs> Hit the her! And I just point at the captain. Uh, 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 I look at the broomstick in my hand and say, okay, uh, I'm going to take off. Uh, can my, will my movement clo- let me close with the... Uh, this is a small vessel, uh, but you were all the way at the back and the captain was all the way at the front. This is why this this is why this moment was chosen, was your distance from uh, this person. So you then, just... I'm ch- then I'll run a move, I'll move a full 30 feet and chuck it like a javelin. Yeah! <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to flip it, the jagged end, uh, aiming forward. Uh, and I say, Captain! Uh, hell yeah. yeah. You close 30 feet. You're another 30 feet away from okay. the captain. Uh, so you you sprint down. You leap down the steps of the deck, run halfway across the ship. And seeing that you you need to act now and decisively, even though she's still half the ship's distance away from you, mm-hmm. uh, you take the broomstick. I'm going to say no disadvantage, but I'm going to say you do not have proficiency because this is not a weapon. Brendan, mm-hmm. now he's fought with handles of cleaning implements his whole life. I will say I am proficient with all simple weapons. And what? <laughs> what what there, more is, is a there broom handle? More simple weapon than a broken. Can't knock the wood. hustle. Pro bono rules lawyer. Let's go <laughs> for it. Okay. All right. Here it is. Go for uh, it. Is your DM not recognizing your proficiencies? <laughs> Call Iron yeah. and Mulligan. No, we're, bro- having, we're having full ad roll. Uh, I bought ad time on our podcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah we ad we advertise on our own podcast. Uh, that's gonna be a twenty-one. Let's go. Have you seen our bill? Wow. It's in North Hollywood. Twenty-one to hit. Um, okay. Uh, what would you like the damage to be on a? Uh, I think a we're gonna call this handle. a club, and we're just gonna call it one d six. So eight damage. Eight. Let's damage. go. Uh, As I just huck a mop handle. Emless standing over Ame's supine body, rises up, sees you charging. I assume you're still wearing your human glamour. Yes, I'm not changing. Um. Uh. So there's a moment of whoo, this broom handle flying from your hand. It streaks forward and Emless, uh, with these tendrils of shadow bearing down on Ame's form to finish what it had started. Instead, have to fly up and your broom handle thuds into the center of a mass of living shadow. Uh, and you hear a footstep back with the impact. That easily could have dropped like a forest animal. Emlis is still standing, but you hear a grunt of effort as the broom handle thuds into the center of your enemy. Mm. As Suvi's going to like sort of run over to her staff, and as she's flipping it up with her foot into her hand, she's gonna like toss you the blunted foil. Great. And then replaces that with uh, the, the glass staff and with her free hand, uh, that little emerald ring, her arcane focus like flares up as she sends out magic missile. 10 points. 10, Ten points of force. You've described before your magic missiles as having that sort of trail of like white sand behind them, right? Or no? Uh, no, Sorry. that, yeah, that's, uh, it's different. I think yeah. these are, uh, these look and sound like something physical moving through space, like little just darts of glass that like shatter and make like a shatter sound on impact. The effect is very small spatially. These like glass darts don't take up much space, but they are brilliant with light and rip through space unerringly. I think there are some spells that you have to aim and this is one of the ones that you don't. And you watch them all curve through space striking their target without failure. Uh, 
you also see Ursula in front of you as you close the distance to this figure that, uh, as the darts approach, the shadow parts in front of them uh, and strike Emless in her body. <laughs> bypasses whatever strange arcane protection is happening here. Um, it's good Woo! to have the Citadel at your back, baby. Yeah. Emless is still up, but uh, uh, with all of the effort of resisting that first blow and then the next one behind it dealing some very serious damage, Captain Emless looks down at the witch uh, in front of her and then looks up at you approaching she has to wonder if she can win this fight and live to see another day or if her number is already up and she should just finish the job she started. It is now the fox's turn. <laughs> and I want that smart mouth son of a bitch <laughs> to persuade her to get out. I am going to roll to see something. All of the fox's uh, cunning and uh, persuasion has left him in this moment as you drop to the ground. And he instead turns to you and goes, boss, and uh, is going to give you advantage. He's going to give you the help action. Uh, as he puts his little small paws up on your body, seeing the fox go over you, Emless seems to like her chances and is going to charge at Ursulon. <laughs> Emless drops. The shadow follows her into a pool on the deck. And as you step, you see the shadow strikes out sideways, flat along the deck, and hits the edge of your shadow cast by the moonlight mm -hmm. and as it touches your shadow you feel a sudden chill and your shadow darkens as she rushes along your own outline on the deck and rises up in your space <laughs> tower around you you feel a sudden chill you take 10 points Yo! of necrotic damage mm -hmm. uh, and lose a point of strength um, this force rises up, seeking to strike at your very heart. Mm. Uh, Ursulon, are you standing? Yes. Woo! Yes, yes. Oh, oh, my goodness! The inkiness rises up around Ursulon um, as he feels it move to the place that is, I guess, where a human's heart would be. Um... Uh, and I'd say in this moment, I think being hit drops the glamour. Uh, and now standing a full foot taller, uh, Ursulon's eyes look down at the the shade that has uh, surrounded him. Um, and uh, I think there's just a <laughs> snarl um, of rage and anger. You see that this force sees a human man approaching, strikes at your heart, and instead finds something much more powerful and unconquerable than it was anticipating. This should have dropped you and did not. Mm. Yeah. The shadow steps back as your form transforms, and you see Emless once again standing, surrounded by this living tendrils of night, uh, looking badly injured and standing in front of you still. Um, Ami, I'm going to need a death saving throw from you. With advantage, with advantage. With advantage. Yeah. That's a 16 on the die. And that's with the death saving throw, we add nothing. So 16 on the die is a, is a success. <laughs> love to see it. Uh, for, for those listening at home, uh, when a character loses all of their hit points, and goes to zero, they begin to make death saving throws. Three successes mean you stabilize and you are okay. Three failures means that the time has come and the character has died. Ooh. We move back, or we move back to Ursuline's turn. Let's go. Uh, can I make a perception check on how bad Emless is doing? Because I think Ursuline is having I think there's a, a rage that is coming over him that is making him want to engage this thing uh, and finish it. But 
can't shake that Ame's on the deck and he desperately wants to do something um, to help her. Uh, that's a 19. Just Let's go. how is this thing looking? <laughs> Emless looks really, really bad. Um, on a, on a, what's, the, what's the perception you rolled? 19. 19? Yeah, I think that you, you also have enough combat sense to know that if you try to run past her, she'll get a swing. Yes, I think uh, Ursulad is going to look back at Suvi, uh, snarling, this ends now! Uh, yes. And is going to, uh, <laughs> like, in a more, like, brutalist way than should be with a uh, with a foil, kind of flip it so that the, uh, the handguard is beneath him and kind of stab into this yes. uh, being. Ah. Uh, go ahead and make an attack. God, you gotta hit Ursulad. Please. <laughs> you got that. You got, yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks, guys. Does an eight hit? I'm afraid an eight does not hit. Are you sure? <laughs> you have a powerful rage within you and a heart that could not be destroyed by whatever shade you now face. And you go to strike, hoping that that rage will carry you forward, and this shade completely anticipates that rage. Mm. Your strength betrays you in this moment as you lunge forward the shadow grasps the sword and begins to move up the hilt towards where you are grasping it and you are holding a piece of stage combat weaponry facing something you cannot understand there's something in CV she hasn't moving uh, but she's like just tracking Emless as uh, she it has moved down across the ship and something in Suvi is beginning to spin up. Uh, so let's do it again, another round of Magic Missile. Ursulon, as the tendrils of shadow make their way towards your forearm, uh, they retract suddenly and uh, vanish in an instant, scattering like tatters of fabric that disappear as they touch the ground, as once again, three motes of glassy light shatter against Emlis's body that skids back across the deck. The look on her face goes from that neutrally impassive expression to a pained one as blood begins to gush out of her midsection, she also falls into unconsciousness. Uh, the look on her face, one of pain and confusion. Uh, Ame, that is your turn again. You are once again getting the help action from the fox. Okay, come on. Ooh, uh, that's a nine. Oh. That is a failure. Oof. One success. One fail. Brennan, it's episode four. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, fight. Yeah, it's a fight. Yeah. Stop. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> what do you, you think? You think these character sheets were for fun? No. Well, I yes, be, I did. I thought it would be a fight, but it would be like a cool one where we're like kicking ass and taking names. <laughs> yep. cool. Oh, I'm having a great time. I I'm think it's very not, cool. None of us are uh, used to starting at level one, Brennan. Yes. Uh, we always have to jump in there with like, you're a level six. All yes. right. You're looking at me being like, do you have bonus actions? And I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> Where? You can Where? Go, uh, hey, you could go I, invisible if you felt like you wanted to. Oh, that'd be great. Wouldn't that be? Uh, <laughs> I have been scouring the sheet like, is there more? <laughs> Maybe there I didn't more? write it all. No, I wrote it all. Okay. Ursulon, that is your turn. Perception check for the shade in the space. Give me a perception check. Uh, 18. Ooh. You do not see the shade in the space. Um, On that roll... Emless is unconscious, but you do, you don't know what you were fighting. You don't know. On an 18, you do not know what you were fighting. Right. Well, Ame's been down for too long, so I'll close the distance to Ame mm -hmm. uh, and uh, drop uh, three points of my lay on hands into Ame. I don't, it's not even just like a hand. I think I pick up uh, Ame oh. Oh. Uh, into my arms. I slowly breathe again, an inhalation. You can barely hear it, but you can feel it, and you can feel my heart start to beat again. I blink open my eyes, and I can see out past your shoulder 
into the night sky, but I can smell it, the pine and the rosemary, and that fur, that fur from, from the nights that we all used to cuddle up together. <sighs> Thank you for saving me. Always. Uh, the fox looks up and says, Hey, I didn't like that. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for the help. So none of, no more of that, okay? You're gonna get so many chickens. Okay. <sighs> so far, I don't like the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not do this again, okay? And you see that a genuine, as 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 sort of funny as the fox is, you see a very genuine thing that he can't quite put together the connection between this monster. He doesn't know if this happens on every boat or what the situation is. It's a very genuine kind of, as worldly as a fox might be, there's sort of a naivete that he just doesn't like. He just really genuinely didn't like it. Um, um and uh, he looks up, uh, the fox looks up at you, Ursulon, uh, and, and makes an expression with you of uh, genuine respect and adoration that you were able to fix whatever this was. Oh. Ursulon looks down and uh, I think uh, kneels so that the fox can climb into his arms along with Ahmed. Fox kneels down and makes that kind of like little animal eyes closed smile, you know, sort of oh, like, yeah. and you see, <laughs> he, just sort of, he just sort of takes a little breath and goes, Big guy. <laughs> yes, small guy. <laughs> small. Uh, Suvi, that's have, your turn, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. As Suvi is still, so she's still spinning up. Uh, so I want to go back and investigate that moment where, like, I just want some insight around when Emlis sort of got dropped. Did she look surprised that any of the fight was happening or surprised that she was taken out? I'm trying to figure out if this shade was a part of her or something possessing her. Um, on the, uh, so as you're, you're spinning up and first of all, I think this is the first, is this the first um, non-staged combat that Suvi's been a part of? Yes. It all went exactly according to plan. Yes. Um, and and you step forward, you close the distance, sort of moving carefully but at top speed across the deck. Um, your instincts, I'm going to say that your instincts are absolutely correct. On Your passive investigation is 21, no roll there. But go ahead and give me an arcana roll to see if any extra information comes along with that. No, 11. Um, you move forward. Your instincts are correct in that... You think you clocked that Emless her look when the shadow left to your instincts with magic, the impassivity that immediately broke into pain and confusion as she dropped. Impassivity is a pretty good marker of unwillingness, of something riding her, right? Of something moving on her. Um, as you move forward, you can't speak to the arcana itself, but I think you, I think possession is the first thing you jump to. Um, uh, and as you get to her body, she's sort of fallen on her side. Um, I'm going to make a death saving throw for her now. Yeah. That's a failure for her. She's bleeding out. Your magic missiles did what they were supposed to do. And it is clear that whatever was, whatever that shadow was, didn't want to be touched by Imperial magic. Um, mm. As, uh, uh, so it, in other words, it got yeah. out of the way to let the thing yeah. it was controlling take the hit. Um, uh, as you go to her, um, I will say, passive investigation of 21, uh, the back of her neck, she has her hair tied up, but she, the way she hit the deck, the high collar of her captain's coat kind of went down, and you see the top of a sigil on the back of her neck. Uh, and you rec you don't know what it means in arcane. You see markings on it that seem to indicate that there is something about it that is arcane, but you do speak Ruve. Yeah. Uh, and the word means chalice. Oh. Ugh. <sighs> Put me down. Uh, well, before this happens, Suvi is like walking over and she pulls out a knife because she knows her training and this is going exactly to plan. And we have been taught to not give quarter. Mm -hmm. 
So despite that, I think she clocks the possession angle and is going to back off and then sees that marking and is going to slit her throat. first instinct is one to understand that this person was possessed. And then you see the rune, and you remember being told as a child that possession is something that in other places, like the enemies of the empire, possession is something that a person can elect to undergo. And you see that word that means chalice. Chalice is a very special kind of vessel, one that would give a lot of status to someone who wanted to become a chalice for something powerful. And the training kicks in. Uh, Ame, as you ask to be put down, you look and see what has been done. As it was happening, I was still staring out past Ursuline's shoulder, so cuddled up into him, and by the time that he lowers me down to her so that I can see what can be done, I see that she's dead. And I don't know, I don't know when it happened. I didn't see. All I know is that my friend saved my life. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I... I wasn't ready. I don't think I'm ready for any of this. It's fine. Are you okay? I'm fine. And she just backs, she sees your outstretched hand. She just takes a half step back. Uh, I'm fine. I mean, I I have a passive inside of of 21. Like, you're not, you're not all right. You're not all right. Don't tell me how I am. I sustained no damage and I took care of the threat. I'm fine. Are you okay? Yes, I sustained damage and there is no more threat now, but I am not okay in here. And I gesture in my heart and my head and those are just as important. And if you need help with those, that's what I'm good at taking care of. See if he smiles, but it is a little condescending. I do have internal damage, I believe. (laughs) Uh, And I point to the place where the shade thought my heart was, and I say, if we are talking about injuries inside, I have one here. Uh, Yes, you have strength damage. Oh, I also have a terrible strength. Terrible strength right now. You both feel very weak. uh, And hear a sudden gasp as one of the crew members comes up to see you all standing over the dead body of the captain. And we'll take a little break right there. Yeah! Ame and Ursulan, you stand uh, probably, again, about 30 feet away from Suvi over the body of the captain, looking down uh, at Suvi holding a bright imperial knife stained with blood. You stare down at the body of this captain You see Suvi standing over the body of this woman that you were about to go heal. Um, And I think you see that rune on the back of her neck as well. And I know that you don't know what it means. Suvi was able to translate it. You become aware that that shadow left and it left this captain here to die. And I think you become aware in that moment that your instinct to heal this captain was not wrong, but that if this captain had been healed, that that shadow would have come roaring back. She did what she had to do. And all of you 
hear a sudden clatter of a tool being dropped to the ground as emerging from below decks, a member of the crew gasps, looking at the strange passengers of the ship standing over the dead body of the captain. The crewmate... Please don't be alive. Help! No. Help! Uh, what do you all do? I'll step up. Uh, <laughs> I, I think Ursulan is going to close, uh, drop on all fours, moving quickly, and then standing in front of him at full height and go, Indeed, some of the crew. Uh, <laughs> uh, these... Uh, uh, you see that uh, uh, quickly the sort of the skeleton crew of only about six sailors uh, comes with with weapons drawn, but seeing a wizard and you in your fo- in your true form, uh, the crew faces you on on the deck. Some of them weep, others look and say, "Please, please, please, please." Keep us up, keep us alive, don't kill us. The, the <laughs> I want to ask in Ruvian, hmm. how many of, of you are from Ruth? Give me, uh, anyone who wants to give me an insight check. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And she's still standing over the body, hasn't wiped off the knife yet. Just does like the little look to the side. Big 17. 11. 11. As you ask in Ruth uh, uh, your question, um, you see... Uh, Four of them look at you kind of confused, and another two look, one of the two that sort of squints their eyes and looks at you, you see one goes in Ruvian, from, from Ruv? Citadel? Uh-huh. Suvi just l- takes a knee uh, and just wipes the knife off. Uh, um, Ame limps up uh, to face the crew. I'm sorry, we mean you no harm. The captain attacked me, and my friends had to save me. She was possessed by something evil. Uh, what is your current strength, by the way? Eight. You went from 12 to eight. So Ooh. you're, you're, there's a, so, so you, the, the limping is very, you have lost a yes. lot of your body's strength. Um, it also looks like, um, you got a 17 on your head. a 17. I think you look at the fact that Ame was the one that was cornered, and you also can feel that whatever this thing was literally attacked, like, the musculature. It, 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 would, it would kill frail people faster than it would kill someone strong and large. And I think the fact that this came after a witch, you put a connection there. You're like, this is a pretty good tool for killing a witch. You wouldn't want to attack a witch's spirit, but attacking a witch's body is something that would make sense to try to do. Mm. Looking at the crew members here, you see they look and see you covered in bruises, stumbling, and there's still a chill on the air, right? There's still this feeling, and even you are like standing like you're you're badly injured as well. I think probably at this point, uh, with all the bruising in your body, each of you are probably having to cough up some blood that has just sort of like emerged up out of your body based on that horrifying necrotic energy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there raises a hand mm-hmm. and says, "I apologize. She was not herself when she died. She made her choice." And I'm going to kick her body over so that the Sylvie! rune is so that the rune is visible. Um, the sailors look and see a tattoo there. Uh, I will ask in this moment uh, for some kind of check, probably from one of you and not all three of you. Um, after you kick that body over, you can give me an intimidation check. You can give me a persuasion check. But something addressing the crew in this moment. Use persuasion. Okay. 21. Uh, they turn, see that rune on the back of the captain's neck. A calm nominally is under the influence of the Empire, and there's a Citadel wizard who's standing here and injured companions. Um, what does Ame say to the crew in this moment? I'm sorry. Your captain was not herself. She was possessed by greater powers. 
that would have destroyed us all if given the chance. But I wish you to remember her as she was with all of you. A capable leader, perhaps a little harried and overworked, but kind. I shall perform the funeral rites. We will continue on our way. As Ame is talking, Ame is speaking very persuasively, and just her tone is very soothing to the crew. You see as Ame is talking about, like, a capable and kind leader, the crew are all looking at each other. They're horrified that you guys are murderers, but nobody had a relationship to this captain as a kind. <laughs> so there's just this, you know, Ame is just kind of off on a limb <laughs> being, like, your kind and capable leader. And all of them are like... Literally all of them are like, I don't know if you, you, you remember meeting them on the dock where they were yeah. completely understaffed, dangerously so, in probably an attempt to save money, and all of them did not. <laughs> These people are living a hard life, and <laughs> the things they're hearing don't map to their reality, but they're also looking at magical people who just killed somebody. So they just sort of get persuaded by Ame in the gestalt space of like, sure, you seem nice. <laughs> yeah, and... To be honest with you, I don't really think that, but, it's, you know, it's like when you talk to a horse. It's You say nice, soothing things, and maybe they don't quite understand it, but they're like, okay, well, there's a big stick in your hand, so, you know. Everybody was beloved at the funeral, right? Yes, yes, yes. We must not speak ill of the dead. Uh, if you cross over to, yes. like, go interact with the captain, mm -hmm. Subi will block you. What are you doing? I am laying the body to rest. There's no honor for a chalice. It's not even about honor, Suvi. It's about making sure that the body doesn't come back as something else. I can solve for that. And I want to start to, like, pick it up to, with the intention to throw it overboard. <laughs> I am what? at T uh, eight at eight strength points, <laughs> I have zero power to stop this. I kind of tug at, at the hem of your cloak from where I'm somewhat stooped. Sufi, just she was a human. She was a human being. Come on. She made a choice. <laughs> we all make choices, and she almost killed you. Why are you doing this? Is it for them? And I gesture with the cleaned knife towards the crew. Uh, you see that the, that the person in the direct line of the knife hits the deck. <laughs> uh, I walk and I kind of use my body to block their moment. Uh, just uh, which one of you will, is next in the chain of command? And I'm just going to have <laughs> that conversation to hopefully, so that they have a focus that's not us doing our thing. Uh, there's an yeah. older, uh, there's an older woman on the crew uh, who looks and says, uh, right, well, I, I, I was, um, uh, you know, delegated to, but the captain said on a crew this small, there was no need for a first mate. So, but. Well, then it will be you. You will make sure that we arrive in Port Talon and then amongst yourselves, you might decide where you will go next and who will be in charge. Um, they all look at each other. Um, uh, you see that the, you see that the, the older woman looks at you and says, um, well, well sir, I, I, you can call me Madge. Madge? Uh, Captain Madge. Oh, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and you see she looks, she looks around at everybody and, and, and goes, uh, I, 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 uh, I don't want to bother uh, Her Excellency, the mighty wizard, um, but if, if you if you saw fit to, um, it, you know, um, given that there is no paperwork and that <coughs> upon your absence from the ship, um, by by any casual observer, we will all be essentially pirates. Um, <laughs> if we could get a seal or a wax thing or a signature from a wizard of the Citadel. That Captain Madge. If you are able to get us into Port Talon, I will have words with my friend. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> and you see this, and he rushes and looks at everybody and says, we don't have to, we can, we can hire extra help, we don't have to. And you see that they all go down and, and sort of rush away. They're like, all right, uh, keep, her, keep her aiming for Port Talon. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and Mad sort of salutes you and says, yeah, you're a good man, thank you, man. Uh, or, uh, you know, mm, mm. Uh, the 
sentiment is understood. Um, and she walks off. Um, and I'll come join wherever yeah. this is at. Mm-hmm. And as the them? conversation continues, no, CV, it's not for them, and it is not for the captain, because the dead truly, most of the time, do not care. Um, it's for me, okay? I've never been party to someone's death like this before, and you seem to be outwardly fine, but, you know, a a, a lot of times people want some sort of finality to a traumatic event like this. Funerals are never for the dead. They're for those who are left behind. If this is what you need to do, then fine. But please, I ask you as a friend, do not presume to know how I feel. And never contradict me in front of strangers. And I'll move out of her way. Um, you are left with the body of the captain. Um, what does Ame say in this moment? I clap my hands twice, and I lay them on the captain's body, which I painstakingly roll back over and move the hands into a gentle pose. May your spirit be at rest wherever it lies, and as I commit your body back to the earth, May you find rest. And it lights up and combusts, leaving behind a small pile of ashes on the deck. For a moment with bright witch fire that (laughs) departs into the air with sparks and smoke, carrying whatever soul was here to the beyond, and leaves the deck of the ship unharmed. Ash remains in the final moments that her body is here. It can be said at least that Captain Emless knew no shadow on her form. The fox looks at the ash, looks up at you, uh, and you see your familiar for the first time be left without words. Um, as he just gazes wide-eyed, understanding that something bigger than he can comprehend is happening here. I open up my arms to him and ask with my eyes, Hulk? He jumps up into your arms. (laughs) Hold him. Sorry, I was kind of a butthole to you. No. You weren't a butthole. There's... You were... You were a... You were a good, better hole. I don't know. Mouth. Mouth. Mouth, probably. I think this is when Ursuline walks over and just... Hard left uh, to <laughs> Sufi. Uh, 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 you see, uh, you take a hard left hug. over to Sufi. I'm like, uh, uh, I'm going to skip the whole talk. And, uh, <laughs> Fox, Fox just like snuggles into yeah. your into your shoulder and, and goes to sleep. <laughs> kind of laugh, cry. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Ursula, you join Sufi. I'm not sure why we were training with swords at all. Um, (laughs) You seem to have become quite capable, magically. Uh, Sometimes you run out of magic. Mm. Are you okay? That was, you were incredible. Uh, uh, Ursulon, uh, how is Ursulon feeling at this point? Does it feel like what's going on? In, does there feel like a permanence to the uh, strength damage or what has occurred? Or does it feel like it's even in the, like, you know, X G- amount of minutes since? Give me perception or insight. <laughs> can I give him advantage somehow? Yeah, by, like, can, also kind of yeah, give him, him a help action. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Oh, that's a nasty 19. Uh, so we'll take a, <laughs> uh, we'll take a 21. We I'll do 19. insight. Um, you think that the, the weakness filling your body, the feeling of, of cold and of muscles that wish to prematurely decay, that, you, mm. that there's some part of you that was like, decomposing, not in the way of like the sort of wonderful rot of the forest that like replenishes as it decays, but decomposing almost like you compose a musical score, that you were being broken apart into different uh, you were decomposing as in being made less than the sum of your parts, being Mm -hmm. taken being disassembled by something that wants to see that happen to the world Mm. um and you feel, though, that that was a process that was begun but wouldn't be permanent until it was completed, that mm. perhaps time and rest and healing will take its natural course. Uh, I look uh, over to Suvi, who I think is also, in, like, looking over the wounds. Yeah. Uh, I think I will communicate to Suvi as much of what you told me um, with regard to the nature of the decomposition but not in a but in a comp a reverse composition sort of way Mm. um uh ending on something of like but i believe i will be all right uh with time uh but does the nature of that magic is that something you are familiar with you rolled low on your arcana check so no i think i think that it it fits um all of it fits your assumptions about the magic of the Dominion, but none of it uh, you can name. There's so... No, I'm sorry. I, I don't know enough about this to help. Mm. But if you feel okay, then... God, she... And she gave a funeral to someone that tried to kill you. No. Ursuline is not a negotiator or someone who can, uh, who can, who like feels in this moment like he can explain away either side. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I think just puts a hand on your shoulder and stands with you. I'm sorry she hurt you. I will be fine. I'm glad you were there to protect me. I hope I can return the favor someday. Have you ever killed someone? Uh, I have been attacked and responded ferociously. Uh, But I have hurt people that I know. And it is never easy. I think when you say that, Suvi gets quiet and withdrawn. Hmm. Okay. The crew goes to work and with the coming of the next morning. And it's truly pre-dawn as you begin to pull into Port Talon. Early gray light, the cloud cover has remained through this passage through the northern parts of Akam up here on the northernmost coast. It is gray and rocky. The sea is always capped with some white foam as it gets close to the shore with a slate blue-gray color to the ocean here. Port Talon has none of the sort of southern fanfare of Joris. Port Talon began fundamentally as a military outpost of the empire, as an industrial place, as a place for you know, things that were bound from Gauthmai to Kemsaraza or in the return or from the Dominion elsewhere. The curve 
of the point upon which the port is built, there is an outcropping of rock that comes from the shoreline and goes down to meet the sea that curves to a massive point uh, that gives the port its name, like a massive curving talon going into the sea. Uh, As you approach pre-dawn light, just a little sliver of lighter gray along the east, um, still sort of seeing the city in night, although now some lanterns have been lit for those that must begin their morning work before the sun can rise. You see a large and imposing city, perhaps larger in terms of population than even Joris was, but dominated by buildings of trade and war, and you see seawalls and watchtowers, you see large civic buildings. At the very end of the point, that comes out to the single jagged promontory that the sea smashes into ceaselessly. Large waves go up. You see an ancient, large, white-painted stone lighthouse, and the huge beacon casts its light in circles across the sea. And as you head into the bay, you see that the inner curve of the talon supports this deep, deep navy blue calmer bay where the large ships can come and harbor. There's some one or two lone gull calls, but it's not a busy time of day yet. You also hear the sort of little crying shriek of maybe an osprey or some kind of sea eagle up here, a little bit colder than it was in Joris. The lighthouse moves, and as it moves, all of you sailing through see much farther out the light reflects off a structure farther out to sea. Not all the way at the horizon, but maybe something like halfway. You see it many rolling sets of waves, kind of uh, many rolling sets of waves obscuring a point of light. Some thing out on the sea, maybe a tall imperial ship, but you see it actually has to be much larger. A gleaming green and purple light fixed in a moment of reflection every time the lighthouse passes across it. Something that maybe you wouldn't have ever seen before or even know the word for, uh, but something like a derrick, a structure, some rig out on the sea that stands there uh, with a little shimmer of alchemical light. And in the harbor, you see imperial ships. Uh, You see several things on your approach to Port Talon. Imperial ships, you see the flags of the Azure Battalion, uh, which are uh, soldiers of the Imperium itself. Um, The Azure Battalion, you know, fight with the weapons given to them by artificers uh, and are not considered wizards, but know just enough spellcraft to have made it into the Azure Battalion. They basically have no spells of their own, but can wield the engines of spellcraft produced by wizards. Um, for, anyone, for anyone that wants to know the mechanics at home, uh, they are fighters that have taken the magic initiate feat. Yeah! Cool. Sorry, so, that's cool. So they can they can rock wands and other things that can sort of create spell effects, uh, but are really the the uh, the very front line of like magical defense of the Empire. Um uh, ships of the Azure Battalion are here. You see their flag flying uh, over what is clearly like a governor's manor. This is the reason that when people say, oh, Akam is in the empire or nominally in the empire, this is what they mean. They're referring mm. to this here, right? So there's a governor of the port. Uh, you also see a wizard's spire here. Uh, but I think think you would immediately clock that flying over that is a symbol of the Imperium rather than the Citadel. These are like wizards of the crown. Yeah. Okay. Bobby. Um, uh, And then you see the city rise in height away from the sea, away from the point that goes back up. And so the base of the Talon of Port Talon uh, rises up into large buildings and big residential neighborhoods. You see, this is where this, the city goes from being large, square, brutalist civic buildings and warehouses and sort of the engines of trade and war up into 
the older city, almost like before the empire got here, of zigzag cobblestones and, you know, six and seven and nine point intersections and stacked buildings all up on top of each other. And a big wall to wall off the part facing inland. And you see lots of smoke up from the other side of the wall as though many fires are being burned here. Mm. Uh, and as you look and see, you can see a little bit of glow of fire uh, because towards the, the west, it is still the dark of night. Um, but you don't see, you don't hear the noises of chaos. Can we smell the smoke? Uh, give me a perception check. And actually, you do so with advantage. Oh, thanks, Bren. <clears throat> uh, that'll be 17. <laughs> And then get a 21 passive. I think I definitely smell it. Ursuline, you get a, you smell it as well. Uh, you know exactly what it is. It's, uh, it's a piece of witchcraft. Uh, uh, what? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's salt fire. Uh, it's, it's a uh, fire that has been laced with salt to um, abjuratively burn, to burn with the uh, context of dispelling or eroding something of, of uh, it's it's not protective abjurative magic, it's dispelling abjurative magic. Um, Ursuline, this smells bad. It smells really bad. There's a noxious, it's, a, it's, I think Port Talon, you immediately get a queasy feeling in your st stomach about Port Talon. This was not happening the last time you were here. Mm. Mm. Oh, why are there witch fires burning? There's, sorry, what? Uh, Suvi was staring out at the Imperial ships. Oh, oh, there's, there's the smoke over there, you see? I point out. Oh. It's, it's salt fires. What? Is this, is there some need to dispel magic here, Ursulon? Um... Not that I would know of in my time here. This smell was not upon the wind. Oh, it's awful. I've never smelled so much of that before. Yes, it is quite uh, noxious. I think, Subi, you just smell smoke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Subi's definitely doing the, like, yeah, we all smell how bad it smells. <laughs> For what reasons do, does, do your people use this sort of salt? My people don't use this. Would I know why uh, there would be such a burning on mass? Give me a history check. <laughs> or, or if you want different information, you can use survival. Yeah, use yeah. Okay, use, survival, survival. use history. Come be a fucking nerd with me. That's uh, eleven. There has never been an occasion to burn this much salt fire. Mm. Like you, you're. It, this would be uh, like I'm trying to think of, of what it is. You know what the recipe is because you know how to use salt fire. You would use salt fire in a situation to like burn like a curse out of a garden. It's like, oh look, like a little cursed plant got into the garden. Let's yeah, <laughs> we're gonna start a salt fire. It'll burn it out, and then we won't be able to plant here for a couple summers, and then it will be fine, right? Um, uh, but um, there is a. He, he, so this is like, it's like, yeah, like you might know how to make baked ziti. You're looking at like a field of ziti. You know, it's like there's a <laughs> field of ziti. ziti. Why like, on earth would, <laughs> yeah, why would the ziti make... belongs in a casserole dish. <laughs> Yet here you have it scattered upon the field, willy nilly. <laughs> willy nilly. Yes, it's too much. It's too much. Oh, we need to find out what's going on. Are we in the harbor yet? Uh, the crew pulls into the harbor. Are you it, there yet? Uh, Are you there yet? Yeah, the crew, the crew pulls into the harbor. Uh, Captain Madge comes up and says, um, Sorry to uh, to intrude. Yes, um, Sufi, oh. is there any chance you might be able to, um, what is it you need? A writ? Oh, oh, right, well, there's just a, um, if, if I am to be the captain of the ship, then there might be a need for, um, if, I, if we just take the ship and then later someone says, Where's Captain Emless? And I say, well, you're never going to believe what happened. Um, Understood. Uh, and CV will go and pull, like, a, a sheaf of very official paper and write... Uh, got a Citadel wet leather, yeah. letterhead on it. A hundred percent. A Citadel letterhead. It's got a big tower in the corner. <laughs> I'm How do you spell Mesh? 
Magic. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, it, 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 Full name. It would be Margaret. 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 Yeah. Do you have a last name, Margaret? Uh, oh, you, Cullen. Cullen. Uh, and go ahead and write out like a big flourishy writ and seal it uh, with like a little personal seal that I have of like the leadership of the Citadel in as much authority as I can confer. <laughs> yeah, doing you it. know it's a stretch, but it's, yeah, it's like, sure, why not? It's the best shot she's got. And yeah. also with the kind of like missions they're probably going to be running, it will it will be enough. You know? Yeah, it's like, exactly. A wizard did it. Um, yeah. <laughs> a wizard did it. wizard did it. Um, <laughs> This little, and I will say, uh, as she like hands it off, Suvi kind of remembers something and goes and like unpins like a little silver like brooch that's like clasping her coat shut and flips it upside down. And it, it looked almost symmetrical, but uh, now that she knows she's going to be around other imperial people, uh, she is outwardly signifying that she has spilt blood in defense <gasps> of the empire. Mm. Do you have any sort of outward reaction to this adjustment? Yeah, I think she's got a very smug smile going. And, like, she, like, hands off the writ and turns it around. And uh, just got a a little bit of, like, a kind of shit-eating grin, uh, like, big man on campus, like, athlete energy. I don't know exactly what the brooch signifies, but this doesn't, doesn't feel right. Ursula likes it. <laughs> uh, Ame, you look. Uh, yeah, you look at your friend, and that troubled feeling comes over you. Um, uh, just checking. Uh, are we feeling better? Uh, the strength has returned. You've had a long rest. Your hit points have returned. You are healed. I think you still bear some of the bruising that's going to be there for a little while from the attack, but most of it happened in your midsection. You didn't get any on your face or neck. It would have been way more damaging if it happened. Like, imagine that hitting your head. Mm-hmm. Um, I still look a little like a peach, but fortunately, <laughs> uh, it's mostly just on the legs because my arms and torso are all covered. Yes. So you are at your full hit points with your spells right. back. Yes. Uh, you walk uh, off the gangplank into Port Talon. The early morning comes, and as it does so, uh, the lights on that structure out at sea, visible from the port, uh, the sun comes up and those lights go out. Uh, and now it becomes impossible to see the structure anymore because it's just of how within the port and lower than the being on the high ship, sort of just the waves kind of obfuscate that structure out there. Have I studied or like heard anything about what's going on out there? Is this new or like some recognizable? Like, G- give me an arcana check. Please, dice. No, no. 14. No. Um, uh, the lights look like, you know, wizard lights. They look like alchemical. <laughs> it's like, you're like, purple, green, good colors. <laughs> I think you, I, I'm a good wizard. <laughs> I think you, I, I think you would clock that as, as, um, the, the brightness of those sea lights, Ooh. sort of keeping, keeping people abreast of that structure so they don't fucking sail into it yeah. or whatever. Um, you would just be like, okay, that's imperial in nature yeah. because it's here in sight and, the Empire's here, but I think you're just like, and you're like, like not a lot of these folksy people in a calm making big old purple and green lights <laughs> out in the ocean, yeah. and that's about the extent. So you're that's I, I, that's the puzzle you're able yeah. to put together. Mm, um, yeah, wizard lights, good. <laughs> I um, can take us to the place where I last interacted with Finley. Okay. Um, Are you worried about the fires? I am. Uh, we came here with a quest. <laughs> I'm not sure what the fires have to do with us. Uh, what were the circumstances of you having to forfeit such a beautiful, clearly magical ah, item to know, some hedge uh, wizard? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> mage. Oh. Mage. Mage. Excuse me. Hedge mage. Thanks. Uh, I think Ursuline is going to turn so he doesn't have to look at you and begin walking, but at a pace that's not like, I want to run away. It's like, I just don't want to sit and watch the expression on your face as I tell you the story. Um, um, And of course, I have told you on our journey so far that you are free to never answer any question that I ask you. uh, I, I don't think there's anything, there's nothing dismissive about the moment in which it's just that he 
is there's too much shame for him to he's going to answer you and i don't think you get the sense that he um is is wanting to not answer uh, mm. but he just he just doesn't want to like sit and be like well here's some bad decisions i've made yeah. um, this is more about context of yes. who we are going to meet rather than an explanation for your actions of course um fiddly was someone who happened upon me after um um, after I had been, uh, you know, living after, uh, Finley is someone who came upon me, uh, I believe having figured out my taboo and my inability to sleep in a bed, um, and accosted me, uh, suggesting that he would reveal, um, my true nature to those and having had experiences, as Ooh. I described to you before with the other head, yes. the other, other head mage from before who, um, attempted to attack or capture me, uh, I offered him the sword in exchange for his silence. Oh, this wasn't a bad decision that you made. This was someone blackmailing you. Yes. Oh. Uh, well, that's a bad decision he made. Yes. Well, <laughs> and now that my true friends, now that my true friends stand with me, it would seem so. <laughs> okay. You walk through the streets of Port Talon, uh, away from the lighthouse and the various civic buildings down here, up towards that old neighborhood that seem, where the buildings seem crowded and top-heavy with chimneys and slate-gray roofs. Uh, they're sort of like upper levels, sometimes jutting out over their lower levels. And we'll... Uh, walking through the alleyways and little side streets, you arrive at a large, thick wooden door, square panels in it. The door has glossy black paint all over it that is partially chipped to reveal kind of the rotting gray-brown underneath. A slight drizzle has started, sort of a little bit of rain, and Early, early in the morning, as you arrive here with the drizzle, it's there's a chill in the air around here. You see a couple people out on the streets, but their hoods are up against the rain. Uh, and thankfully, as the rain starts, it begins to knock some of those noxious fumes out of the air. Uh, but now up in Gray Hill, this neighborhood up near the wall, you see the imposingness of the wall. Um, give me, anyone that wants to give me an arcana check. Please, dice. Please. Yeah. Okay. Dirty 20. Nine. We're back, baby. Uh, the wall is conjured. It's a conjured wall. Probably would have taken a couple weeks of consistent casting, uh -huh. but... Whatever the wall was, you don't you don't recognize from the last time you were here. Maybe it's built on an older wall back when this was like some lord's castle hundreds of years ago. But this new, fresh, powerful stone wall got built here. The towers, this was wizards shaping stone probably over like a two or three week period to create something that kind of dwarfs the buildings around it. It's a little bit imposing. And with the smoke coming up from the other side of it, it has kind of creates a stone curtain enclosing this neighborhood that you're in. The tallest building here is probably like three three stories to maybe four stories. And the wall is about like eight stories tall. So it's quite a bit taller than the buildings and seems almost like... Um, and it doesn't seem artificial. The wizards had the skill and craft yeah. to create buttresses and towers and stairs and things within it. But you you just look at it and you're like a little bit too crisp, a little bit too clean. That's spell work. Yeah. As we were passing through the streets, I imagine as there's the light drizzle and the sporadic townsfolk, I wouldn't have seen anybody that I felt would have knowledge or authority enough to explain the the uh, the salt fires or the weird, cool lights out in the bay at all. I could explain the lights. Those are beautiful wizard lights. <laughs> Oh. Um, I think I think Ame, um, passing through the streets, looking for someone. Um, give me an insight check. Twenty-four. I think you are. You have a deep and open heart, 
and are looking for someone you can trust. And walking through this city, you are struck with the feeling of being near animals that are ready to bite you. Like, you've oh. re- you've rescued animals from traps before, and you are a very sweet witch. Even as a very sweet witch, there are animals that you can't just go up and touch. And that's the vibe you get from people that aren't acting aggressively or hostile. You just get the sense from them as their hoods are up against the rain that uh, you don't see a lot of warm faces in Port Talon. I am unfamiliar with this kind of vibe. I grew up in a small town where everyone knew one another and uh, was in each other's business and that always had a kind smile for a stranger, if nothing else. And even traveling through the rest of Akam on our way here, it, the towns were small enough where you can't be too much of a jerk or you'll get cast out. So this feels bad. You realize these people don't need to be in community with each other to survive here. And I think as completely unfamiliar as you feel in this place, uh, some part of you must also recognize that what did that mean for Ursulon when he was here by himself? (sighs) You arrive at the black door, the paint chipped, a huge stone archway, uh, or sorry, huge flat granite slab of keystone over the door, a sturdy building built of many different stones mortared together. Uh, There is no sign here. Ursulan is feeling just a little hot, Mm -hmm. because I like, and I think the walk the whole time, the support from Ame with regard to the like you know, the mis- the the mistakes he made, uh, I think is just kind of like, yeah, I want this motherfucker to see me now with my fucking <laughs> friends. Uh, and I, uh, <laughs> this is the door. Bang, bang, bang. I'm gonna cast mage armor on myself real quick. I like. I there is like a, a weird aggressiveness. Yeah. I like. I, I don't love think, it. No weapons out, but mm. there's a like a weird. I don't. It's it's just it's just. Peacocking. It's just yeah, a we love it. feeling great. Banging on the door. You hear a clatter of metal. And then silence. <sighs> Findlay! Hedge, hedge mage Findlay! Uh, bang. <laughs> uh, you hear a shattering of glass. I, and I think it's honestly a weird, like, switch of, like, going from a fist, like, at, like, a right angle, pounding on the door, to a, like, fist punching the door. Yeah. <laughs> Finley! Go! 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 Uh, go ahead and give me an athletics check. Okay. Uh, it's a nine. Uh, you punch the door, um... And uh, uh, punching it, uh, very, very thick door. Your fist hits into it, makes a big noise. And then there's just, there's just more silence. This is not going the way you thought it would go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do, do you want some? <clears throat> Open. We get our campaign's version of the Gandalf at Moria scene. <laughs> you say open. You, you can feel the rain kind of soaking into your cloaks a little bit. <laughs> I think Ursulon is, even though it's not working, Ursulon has that kind of, like, group fun energy of, like, a bunch of kids trying to hit, like, a window with a rock. (laughs) We haven't hit it yet, but one of us has to. Uh, Uh, As you begin to sort of magically command the door to open, um, uh, uh, Suvi, uh, give me an investigation check. Yeah. Ooh, there we go. That's your girl back, 23. Uh, You see there's a doorknob on the door. Yeah, I'm going to let this happen for a little while longer. And then when I see, when I can feel magic coming off of the witch, like, we're going to do, I'm just going to, I'm just going to. 
And I tried to very subtly just go touch the doorknob. You, you shouldn't. That's we can't. Oh wait, no. This we don't like this guy. Yeah, go on in. <laughs> you. So you see the issue, which is that the door opens outward, uh, uh, and yeah, it's set oh, in a stone. It. it is set in a stone doorway, so it can't uh-huh. get knocked off its hinges this way. Um, you reach in, uh, open the door outward. As you do so, um, door swings. There are four short stone steps down a little archway, almost like the kind of little downward things into like a cathedral, like this got built lower into mm. this place. And you realize looking at this big stone building that maybe this did used to be some kind of castle or sacred space or something like that a long time ago. And now, who knows, maybe many dynasties have come and gone since whatever this building was originally built as. And now the smell of partially molded fabric and moths, uh, old metal things, damp stone, and all kinds of uh, bric-a-brac waft out of these four short stone steps into a chamber filled like some strange combination of someone taking a midden heap, a refuse pile of odds and ends, something like a a rotting museum that was set upon by scavengers and turned into a pawn shop. You see that there is some, there is no light within this place to illuminate it other than high set windows on the lowered floor of this chamber that just the gray, rainy, drizzle light is coming through. So all you see uh, is the some tops of shapes, like, oh, a number of rusty halberds sitting in an old umbrella stand surrounded by some uh, half-stripped suits of armor. You see that as much as this appears to be a place that people can come and observe wares, there's also an obvious workbench where it looks like you see a piece of imperial uh, wizardcraft. There is some sort of uh, spell engine for something that is sort of su- supposed to be like a, uh, a faithful, like abjurative engine has clearly been picked apart and they're looking for the parts of it that are valuable to strip. Um, and uh, up against the walls, you see tapestries that have had the spell threads, the things that actually make them magical, partially ripped out. So Oof. now they're just disenchanted tapestries that have kind of been stripped and chopped for the magical components within them. Um, you see a a skull up on the wall of some kind of sea beast that has many fangs, some old, almost like pre-Cambrian thing that just rests there and looks old and rotten and uh, uh, from some animal you cannot fathom but is so large that would almost have to be aquatic. In the center of the floor, wearing a patchwork robe like some sort of quilt of stories with little emblems and embroidered birds and bits of leaves and then a solid gold or bright ruby patch of fabric and a wizard's hat but made of quilt material so it looks soft and almost squishy to the touch is a bearded figure, his mouth open in a rictus of horror, his throat messily slashed, exposing the blood and gore of a ruined throat, his beard, salt and pepper in life now soaked red with gobs of blood, his yellow jaundiced eyes in some expression of last pain and anguish, looking up is the man that Ursulon recognizes as Finley. An old, bearded man. uh, Get up! uh, (laughs) In the corner of the room, twisting on a last piece of wood, the shattered glass of a broken window. The glass falls, indicating perhaps some route of escape. Finley! 
That was Lou Wilson as Ursuline, Erica Ishii as Ame, Abria Iyengar as Suvi, and Brennan Lee Mulligan as Everyone and Everything Else. Worlds Beyond Number is edited, designed, and scored by Taylor Moore at Fortunate Horse, with additional sound design from Michael Gelfi Studios. For even more like this, join us on our Patreon. We'll see you there.